The idea behind surgery is if you take care from one area, move it to another, uh, it continues to last in the new location as it would have in the original location. That's called donor dominance. The reason why it works is we're not just taking the hair shaft, but we're taking the anatomy of the hair follicle, including the lack of receptors. That's why hair in a healthy area is not affected by hormone changes because the hairs in the donor region don't have many receptors for those. So they're, they're, they're uh, transferring that follicle, including its lack of receptors, allows that hair to grow in a healthy manner. Now there's two approaches. Uh, the first approach is called follicular unit transplantation, where I take a thin segment of hair bearing skin from just behind one ear through the densest part of the donor area to just behind the other ear. It's taken out and closed with a single suture. Uh, it looks like this during the procedure, like a cut that's been sewn up, your hair falls over it, so you can't see it even a second afterwards. Eight to 10 days later, it looks like this, when the sutures come out, and 95, 98% of patients have very fine scars that heal just like that. Uh, this is how it looks the day after the procedure. This is the day after the surgery. It's a single sterile nylon suture that's used to bring the two edges together. Uh, so they just touch and then ultimately it heals with a very fine scar. Uh, this is a patient of mine parting the hair where there is no scar and then parting the hair right on the scar. And you can actually get the hair to grow through the scar with something called a trichophytic closure that allows the hair to grow through the scar. Here's another example of a patient where there is no scar and right on the scar. Uh, so there's a very fine scar tucked away in a permanent hair bearing area in the donor area. Uh, these are patients of mine that underwent FUT. Uh, this person's able to wear their hair at that length. Here's another example of a patient who had FUT. Here's a 44 year old, um, a video of a 44 year old patient, and you can see his scar is right, right in there. So it's almost like a, a change in <clears throat> hair angle. You wouldn't want to go any shorter than this with your hair. This is about as short as you can go with your hair, right in there. Once that segment's taken out, it's placed under a microscope and divided up into the individual uh, follicular units, grafts, micrographs. We separate them based on their number and also based on their caliber. The finest ones uh, would go in front, obviously, and then uh, coarse hairs would go towards, towards the back. Another approach is called FUE, follicular unit extraction, where rather than taking a segment and closing with sutures, I'm capturing the hairs individually using a tiny motorized punch. I don't take every one, I take every third or fourth, so you're not left with a bald patch on back, but real subtle, generalized thinning. Uh, people that like this like the option of wearing their hair really short, buzzing their hair down to a zero or a one. Um, the, this is a patient of mine the day of and eight days after his FUE session. Another patient the day of and two weeks later. The downside of this approach is you have to shave the back and the sides of your head, the donor area. You don't have to shave the top, you leave that as it is uh, for either approach, but for this approach, FUE, which you don't have to do with the first approach, FUT. For FUE, you have to shave your head because I have to see between the hairs. Again, with, with the first approach, you can just leave everything as is. You don't need to shave anything. Uh, this patient, this is a series of images the day of, the next day, three days later, and eight to 12 days after his FUE harvest. This is the patient the day of and the next day, uh, the day of and a week later. So within a week, it's sort of like a short hairstyle. This is a patient 10 days after his FUE session. Um, uh, this patient came in for a big uh, 2700 graph session the day of, three days later and a week later he had to give a presentation this, this day and he was able to do so. He has this sort of funny little haircut up on top but that was his choice. That's the, the donor area a week afterwards. Uh, this is eight days after a session. Now one of the things that's important is when I do my FUE I use a handheld motorized punch. Uh, the reason why I use that is there's a natural curvature of the hair beneath the scalp surface. With a handheld, I can account for that. So I can use a slightly smaller punch and still capture a follicle intact and it creates less trauma on the scalp surface. Now, there's a robot that does um, FUE where it punches the hairs in, in and out. I don't use the robot um, because the robot just punches straight in and out. And in order to account for that curvature, it has to use a larger and larger punch and so really for that reason, I don't use the robot. I use a smaller punch and, and there's, there's uh, less trauma when I'm performing the procedure and ultimately better healing. Uh, this is a patient who had the robotic approach. You can see there's sort of a grid of scar missing. He had another 2,000 some odd grafts with, with me and a smaller punch and a softer gradient. It actually looked better about 12 days later. Um, and also at the end of the harvest, one of the other keys to really having a pristine donor is um, adding an extracellular matrix powder called A-cell, which is something that at the end of the harvest, we apply that 
it minimizes scar tissue formation and about 38% of the hairs regenerate. So the three keys in my opinion to really having a pristine donor um, are A, using a smaller handheld punch, B, the punch oscillates rather than spinning, it oscillates which is a cleaner, uh, cleaner punch and there's less trauma. We also have more protective tissue when the grafts are being captured with that type of punch and then of course applying that matrix powder at the end along with a patient's platelet rich plasma. Those are things that really help with the healing process. This is a, a image of the two, two types of grafts produced with either approach. On the, I guess on, on the right hand side are grafts produced with the first approach, FUT or follicular unit transplantation. On the left hand side are FUE grafts. The advantages and disadvantages of either approach are as follows. Let's start with FUT, the first approach, where I capture the hair closed with sutures and the grafts are divided up. One of the advantages is you don't have to shave your hair at all. You can come in and go just as you are. Um, and so getting back to work can be a little bit quicker uh, with that approach. We usually say a week to 10 days um, trying to lay low from work or social activities. Some people can get back earlier. Um, so one advantage is you don't have to shave your head. The other is there's slightly more protective tissue. So the survival rate is a little bit better. In, in either case, the, the survival rates are well into the high 90th percentile, really 99-97% uh, with the two approaches. Uh, studies have, have validated that. Um, so with either approach, there's really healthy growth. Um, traditionally, there was a big gap in terms of the, the survival rate. Uh, FUT, the first approach, was, was quite a bit more successful. Now that gap has been narrowed to the point of being virtually non-existent. Um, the, so the advantages are you don't have to shave your head, uh, the growth is maybe a little bit better, um, and also the stubble, the, the short hairs when the grafts have been placed, uh, those fall out a little bit sooner. Um, the disadvantage is it can be kind of annoying having sutures in place for 8 to 10 days. Uh, when they, when they, you take them out, you feel much better and you feel like yourself again. And you wouldn't want to shave your head down, down the road after an FUT session because there could be a very fine linear scar. Um, the advantages of FUE are you can, it's a little bit more comfortable uh, for that eight to 10 days after the procedure because you don't have sutures and also uh, you can shave your head in the future because there's no linear scar. The disadvantages of FUE are you have to shave your head back here for the procedure um, and uh, sometimes the stubble where the grafts have been placed can persist a bit longer. With either approach, the next part sort of the fun part, where I'm designing the pattern, following the angle and direction of the hairs that are there, so as not to damage the hair, but also when the new hair comes in, it comes in at that same angle and direction. This is a patient of mine during the procedure, it can look red and scary. Um, usually nine to 12 months is full growth, but even at six months, it starts to translate into hair growth. This is an image of how it looks during the procedure, little red dots where I've made sights between the hair. You don't have to shave your head up on here. You can leave your hair just as it is, I'm used to navigating between um, uh, hair at its normal length. This is a patient uh, the morning of the procedure and the day after. Uh, this is five, five days later, the redness has really subsided and, and the short hair is the little stubble where the grafts have been placed uh, can be felt more than they can be seen. This is a woman during her surgery and the next day. Uh, so the redness goes down quite a bit the next day. A patient during the procedure and when it grows in, during the procedure and when it grows in. Now short-term recovery, during the procedure, uh, there can be quite a bit of redness. That redness goes away, I'd say about a week to 10 days later. Then the little stubble, the short hairs where the grafts have been placed fall out about two and a half, three weeks later. So three, four weeks after the procedure, you look just like you did on the morning of the procedures if you hadn't done anything at all. And then you go right back to square one and it takes about a year to see the full effect. Um, people get frustrated at three months because they don't see much of a difference. It's not until nine to 12 months after the procedure when you can appreciate the full benefit of the, of the procedure. Now I had a patient last year who took a picture of his head every morning after his surgery to create kind of a time lapse. And um, you can see nothing really happens the first couple months after the procedure. Maybe around the six month mark is when you can start to notice that there's some improvement, but it's not really until nine to 12 months after the procedure when you can appreciate the full benefit and then it's something that's always gonna be there and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So this is, that's the, the, the expectations of sur surgical growth. Um, the last thing I wanna emphasize is these are two, two different patients I have them in parallel because this patient had a family history 
uh, that told me someday he was going to look like the patient on the left. So when I treated him, I treated him as if he already did have that type of hair loss, meaning I marched in and around and between the hairs that were there into areas of future hair loss. So after the procedure, he was very happy. He went from looking like this to looking like this. But over the next 15, 20 years, when he loses the pre-existing hair that he's destined to lose, he goes from looking like that to looking like that. So he never has to go through the awkward bald phase. And that's really the, the long-term planning. That's the concept that is, is most essential in performing the procedure and making sure that it looks good, not only the year after when it comes in, but for 10, 15, 20 years down the road, making sure that people are left with a, with a natural appearing pattern that doesn't draw attention to itself. The whole purpose of this is to take your mind off of it. If it's something that bothers you, you just feel healthy and normal about it again. And that's really the objective of the surgical approach.